Hey there, welcome back to the Path to Zion podcast where we are rediscovering the ancient way. Thank you so much for listening today. Look, I'm going to be honest from the very beginning. I am very frazzled (laughs) this week. I have been assaulted with losing things. I don't know what in the world is going on. I'm not the most organized person in the sense of like I know where everything that I own is located. My carport where tools and things like that are oh man. I don't I don't want to be that way, but I just don't take and make the time to become organized. There are things that man for years now, I'm like, man, I really want to get this toolbox or, or this bunch of junk in some sort of organized ma- manner, and it's still waiting. And so we've had a chaotic 10 days or so, to say the least, a lot going on, very busy, very distracted, very rushed. Just a lot of things going on in the natural. Um, which is an answer to prayer in the sense because it has to do with, with people. Relationships. People moving to our vicinity. People visiting us. We've prayed for a while. That if, if in the Father's plan there are people to relationally overlap with us that the Lord would send us to them or send them to us and and the the Father's been responding to that. But with that takes a lot of time and effort and energy and man, other things just kind (laughs) of get swept off the table into a box to tend to later. And I'm not going to bore you with all the personal demands of my life it's not about that although there are there are spiritual principles for us to learn within the journey we're on within the process we're all individually in and it looks different for each one of us and so specifically even related to the podcast I I use Um, a very small digital handheld recorder device for most episodes not for all of them but for most because as even as right now I'm I'm generally always driving when I'm recording these episodes if it's in-depth teaching stuff or study type stuff where I've got pages of of information typed out and all that obviously I, I don't I don't reserve that for when I'm driving. But for the most part, if it's just commentary on a verse or a a scriptural text or a general thought, yeah, it's just, you know, a small handheld device while I drive. Well, I lost it. I've had that thing for a couple years. It's so small and convenient. It's nothing super fancy or professional it's not about that it's just that I man I had episodes on there that didn't get on air and I have no idea where it was when we got home Friday it was late in the evening we were trying to hurry to get home by sunset in our home we we honor the Sabbath which was not Sunday and is not presently Sunday so We believe in the Saturday Sabbath that begins Friday evening at sunset. We have a a Shabbat meal at our home. Well, Joel, I didn't know you're Jewish. Well, (laughs) I've had a lot of those conversations recently, but I don't have time for one of those right now. (laughs) No, I'm not Jewish. I believe when I'm told that I'm grafted into the people of God that that is literal. It's not mere spiritual metaphor I am literally in a a royal priesthood chosen nation people me (laughs) 
It's the Gentile miracle. We talk about it a lot here, of course. That's nothing new if you listen to the program at all. But we were we were rushing to get home. We were in a time crunch doing some some responsibilities. We were it was good things, serving serving other people. Good things, you know, we're not crazy and like you know, we're not throwing out and disregarding the teachings of Yeshua about like, well, you can't heal on the Sabbath and you can't pick a a bean off of a bean plant and and eat it on this, you know, come on now. But we still try to, in our heart, and then thereby in our actions, honor the Sabbath. Don't profane it, right? Man, I want to teach on that so bad. That's one of the things in the queue, is talking about the biblical understanding of profaning. It's just making it common. Well, you know... Sabbath, man, even if you make it Sunday, the only difference really is you go hang out with people at a church service. I mean, but it, it's not, that's not merely what it was meant to be, was a, you know, an 11 to 12 church service. Oh, well, I'm in the Sabbath rest. Well, oh my goodness. My whole life, that's what I said. <laughs> I'm just in the Sabbath rest. Every second of my life is holy. Okay, and here we are. We're all over the map again, aren't we? Man, much, many things lead to this right here, though. I can't help myself. It, it leads to what we practically do with consecration and holiness, which is not profaning something, whether it's the name of God, where we just simplify G-O-D, and we just say God all the time. Well, there was a specificity, if you will, in in the Bible and in God's people, man, and even in other nations, man, there was one Elohim of Elohims, and his name was Yahweh. <laughs> he was a distinguishable God. He wasn't just God. He was specific. And we have to be careful. We ourselves do not profane the specifics, the name, the day, the Sabbath day. Don't profane those things. Why? Because they become commonplace in any one of us. Just common. Hey, I'm holy all the time. That's what I said. I've taught on that before. I've spoken about that so many times, about how the conviction came to me. About like, man, I'm holy every day. <laughs> every day is holy. I, I've heard this song for years. I used to love it. I, I just can't make it through it anymore. Where it's talking about um, the principle. I'm not going to quote the song, but the principle of the song is like, every second is sacred. Every moment is sacred. Every day. Well... <laughs> That's true in a sense. I'm now the temple of the Holy Spirit. I'm the abode of Yahweh Elohim. I'm I'm His dwelling place, yes. There is an understanding of that principle that is in fact true, but we are also equally called to set apart Moedim days, distinct, ordained by Yahweh God Himself, not by us now. Something that's in the, his His ways are higher than ours understanding. There is something to the specifics of not profaning days, events, occurrences, his name, and even we ourselves. We are not to just be merely common. We're to be holy, which is the opposite of common, the opposite of profaning. I don't want to get into all that. There's so much more to that 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 we can't cover today. But friends, we're called to be distinct and set apart. So I lost, so get back to my my original point, if there was one. I lost my recorder cleaning up the house. I could do air quotes right here, cleaning up the house. Often the way I clean stuff is I grab it all and I go set it somewhere else, setting our table for dinner. I was trying to help my wife, and I believe the recorder was there. (laughs) 
you know how you do with anything you lose or anyone's trying to help you. Well, let's walk through where you've been. Where were you the last time you saw that item? Uh, you know, here's the funniest question, right? Have you ever been asked when you that somebody says, hey, man, what are you looking for? Oh, well, I'm looking for my, my phone. Well, where did you lose it? <laughs> what, what an incredible question, right? <laughs> well, where did you lose that item? Um, isn't that kind of the definition of losing something? I don't know. <laughs> and so somehow I, I gathered up my recorder in some attempt to get our table ready for our meal on Friday evening. And who knows where it is? Man, today's already Wednesday. It's still missing. Who knows? I don't know where it went. Thankfully, I've got another recorder, a portable recorder I can use. It's actually nicer, but it's just bulkier and and a little more difficult. So I did want to just say, look, there's a reason why I haven't been recording. I'm not just being lazy or disinterested. Things have just been a little bit out of order in my house, out of... I don't want to say out of control. (laughs) Maybe I should if I was absolutely honest. Things have just been a little chaotic in my home. And it's okay. And and, and just just so that this brief episode has got a little bit of substance beyond me talking. Um, Yesterday morning, uh, we had some guests in our house. We were watching some children um, for a family that's just moved very near to us. I'm so thankful that the Father has shown us kindness to to bring others in their journey presently, just this moment, who knows about what tomorrow holds, in our vicinity. It's a blessing to give and to receive the relational interaction of the body. And yesterday morning during our teaching time at our breakfast table, I shared with them some stuff out of 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 2. Paul's being very honest. You know, one thing I like about Paul, he was just who he is, who he was. Very unapologetically on both sides. And that's the thing, he was very balanced in the sense of he had no issue saying that he could boast in the work of the Messiah. You couldn't persuade him that he had not encountered Yeshua, no one could debate him out of that revelation and that experiential encounter that he had. And he was very confident, man, unmovable, unshakable, shackled to the ground, shackled to an officer, man, who cares, right? I'm free. Man, I love talking about that, and I'm going to try not to right now, but I love, love, love the principle within Paul's life when he was imprisoned because we do know that most of what he wrote was from from prison (laughs) I mean think about that friends when you when you write when you journal when you study oh man I hope you do how much of it comes out of like an absolutely lowest of low horrendous experience that you just would rather never go through yet it's all about rejoicing in the Lord and boasting in your salvation and and worshiping the Lord as if it's your best day as if it's perfect air conditioned you know whatever circumstances you wish lights dimmed or a certain song playing whatever you call the absolute ideal circumstance for you to encounter the Lord and worship Him and declare His goodness and kindness, that result, that fruit, if you will, but in your absolute most worst, the the worst, most horrible conditions you can imagine, shackled and chained and bound for something you didn't even do that wasn't even do you. You weren't guilty of anything truly wrong unjustly tried and unjustly held and restrained and even beaten yet your words are declaring the goodness of God (laughs) and one thing Paul said when he's writing the church at Corinth 
He's talking about several things. He's talking about some things about his identity. And he was, as we know, again, very confident. He was the lawman of lawman, and he didn't he didn't just abandon that and walk away and said, Man, I I made a mistake my whole life. Why did I why did I keep Torah? Why did I go to the synagogue? Why did I teach this and this? No. <laughs> he encountered Messiah and it all made sense because he received what he saw in his blindness. He made the entire doctrinal universe made sense to him in that moment and over the course of days of being blind. And as he's talking to the Corinthians, he says, I, Paul, was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And what I was sharing with the children yesterday morning at breakfast is just the fact that, you know what? We can be men like Paul. Strong. Confident. Boasting in the work of the Lord as we are equally alongside that. Openly admitting our weakness, our fear. And what I told the children, talking about trembling, in their nervousness. In their struggling to be confident in themselves. But see, Paul understood that what he was called to do and to be, it wasn't about him. <laughs> it wasn't about him. It was, it was about the Messiah. It was about the King. It was about the gospel message that went from the law and the prophets and the very beginning of time. And all of these things, like Stephen recounted at his stoning... The fullness of the gospel. Now again, the gospel did not begin at John 3.16. The gospel did not begin when Yeshua was on the cross. The gospel did not begin when he rose again. When he rose from the grave. The gospel did not begin when he ascended. The gospel did not begin at the Pentecost for the Gentiles reality. What I like to call with Cornelius. All these things we could talk about. When the when did the gospel really begin? Surely it was the upper room, right? Surely it was Pentecost. Well, again, why were they in the upper room? They were celebrating Shavuot. They were already gathered like they would have done for years and years and years and years previous in this moment in the proper context of of awaiting the promise that Yeshua told them. But they would have already been there. They would have already been gathering. <laughs> it was Shavuot. Pentecost. Coinciding with the, the giving of the promise. The Holy Spirit coming to men. Indwelling men. And so Paul was proclaiming a gospel that was saying, guess what? You Gentiles, you, you can know Yahweh Elohim. You can know him. <laughs> the door has come. And his name was Yeshua the Messiah. His door, the door came and he had a name. He had a title. He was the mediator king. And you can know him. And then you can know the father. You. Now again, this came from Shaul, Paul. <laughs> A man who, who persecuted and killed those who previously were in the sect, if you will, of the Messiah. The followers of the way. The people of the way. When the revelation and the encounter came, Paul realized what he had to do and he went. And of course we know that. Of course. 
But even in his encounter, even in the revelation that he had that obviously on on the I mean, man, you talk about a dividing line of an encounter. There's not much greater than what he experienced before and after meeting Yeshua. What a great example for us, man, to continually ask ourselves, have I encountered the Son of God in such a manner? Now, we can easily say yes or no just by answer alone, but I mean by the fruit of our life. Are we that different? Are we so changed? Have we been so moved from the domain of darkness to the kingdom of light like that? Where we were completely deceived and actually opposing the will of the Father, but now we're His main representative. Now we're His main promoter. Our entire life now is about what? Spreading this gospel message that Yeshua the Son has come and He has came that you might be reconciled to the Father and be rightly received, holy, acceptable, and pleasing in His sight. Oh, friend, won't you come? Come through the gate, albeit narrow, you can come through the blood of the Son. And that's why Shaul had an understanding of in his confidence and in his rightful place as a spokesperson of the gospel of Christ to say, man, I'm weak. I'm fearful. I'm even trembling. I'm even nervous to open my mouth and speak the oracles of God because he's so high, he's so lofty. And he, he, oh my gosh, he has entrusted me to reveal the mysteries. Man, that's for a whole nother time. We've talked about that before, but that always bears repeating. Hey, <laughs> I'm about to reveal to you the mystery of the entire age. I'm about to reveal the mystery of the ages, people. And guess what? It's coming through the church. The capital C church. It's coming through her. Oh, man. So, friends, be encouraged today that Man, we yes, let's be let's be confident. Let's boast in the works of the Lord, yes and amen. I got no problem with that at all. Let's point to him, let's point to him. Hey, don't look at me. Don't look at me. Don't look at my heritage, don't look at my image, don't look at my bloodline and my lineage and my identity. Man, don't be impressed by me. Don't be impressed with this flesh. There's no good in me. I don't care who you are or where you've been or what you've come from and all these things, man. I I lost all of that when I went into, into Messiah. It's all gone. I'm in the I'm in the I'm in the people of God reality now. The me-ness, to make up a word, <laughs> the individuality-ness of me, gone. Dead, in the grave, buried. To go back a year ago with my immersion and then we'll bring this to a close. Man, we've got to get to that again too. An anniversary of sorts. It's in the water. Man, I said that for months and months and months after my baptism this time last year, right before Yom Teruah. It's in the water, man. It's in the water. It's in the water. Don't look at me. If you see anything good in me, praise the Father. It's from Him. It's a gift from Him. It's not me. (laughs) Because I'm here in weakness. I'm here in fear. I'm here in trembling. And yes and amen, God is plenty good enough to use this vessel of clay. And He will. But man, it's not about us. It's not about you, friend. I'm sorry if that's a news flash. It is not about you. It is not about your image and how many likes you have on Facebook. How popular you are, how famous you are, who you think you are, who cares? It means nothing apart from the cross of Christ. That's what Paul was always saying. It means nothing apart from the gospel. It means nothing apart from my identity in the Son. I believe in this hour, man, he's... he's 
He's handpicking people who are willing, postured, and positioned in humility to be completely surrendered to losing their identities entirely into the Messiah. It's time for that. I mean, all of our mess, our accolades, no, they've got to go. There's no time for that anymore. Why, why do we see ministries being torn down left and right every day? Why are we seeing the constant embarrassment of leaders, Christian leaders, Christian governments, embarrassingly exposed? Because God's saying, you know what, no more. This may be a stretch for some of you. I don't see I see it absolutely synonymous. The Asher poles, man, they're coming down. And in this sense, all you people who want worshiped, no, no more. No more mixing. You want accolades, you want a title, you want your name on a ministry and your picture standing there posing pretty with beautiful teeth and all your list of accomplishments? No. Next. I know that's a hard word, but man, I feel that to the core of my being, and I'm seeing it firsthand. I believe the eyes of Yahweh are looking, what, all over the earth for those whose hearts are towards Him, not towards accolades for self and self-recognition. It's all about the King. It's all about the King. Don't look at me, man. Don't look at me. It's about the King. It's about the King. Not move me out of the way now. Oh, Lord, move me out of the way so so that you can do what you want to do. No, 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 no. we got to be balanced. Of course, again, we're always saying no extremes now. We have a place. We have a function. We have a role. The will of the Lord gets accomplished through his members. It will be by us, empowered by the Spirit in the here and now. So, friends, be, friends, uh, be encouraged today. Let's, let's put our hands to the plow. Let's abase ourselves. Look to the sun, look to the sun. Oh, man. I want to be infatuated with being a workman for my father. Go to pathdesign.com. Sign up for our um, email notifications if you have not done that already. Drop us a line at path to Zion podcast at gmail.com if you would like us to come and visit you where you are that might be very very possible doesn't matter where you are let's at least see let us know i'd love to come pray with you speak should the lord open the door I'd like to get to know you see what the lord is doing in your area of this world also, you can always find us on YouTube. There's not much on there that's new right now other than some old videos that are reposting. My wife has something in process where, man, I think like every day, archived audio messages are being posted on YouTube. Some of them are a year and a half old. I hope they're still good. <laughs> I hope I still believe that way. Whatever the case, check them out if you like. And uh, I want to close the door on this today saying thank you to everyone who has given. I already had a message recorded on the, on the recorder that I lost thanking people for giving. Man, people have given to this podcast in the last two weeks. And I've got to say a special thank you to a certain individual. You know who you are. I'm not going to give you accolades here because I'm not going to rob you of the gift of the Lord. That is due you by giving it to you now just out of my mouth not going to limit that but man a a brother handed me a check talked about the podcast for a while and handed me a check I didn't even know what it was brought tears to my eyes when it touched my hand like I had no idea what it was I I don't care if it was if it would have been fifty dollars man I was moved I'm like wow really nobody's ever done that he listened to the podcast saying man if if we just had some money to do this, that would sure be awesome. We could we could really do great things. And man, he just the Lord put it on his heart and he gave <laughs> to us, to the podcast, man. It's incredible. I was so touched, so moved. Thankfully, we had to end our time together. 
And I had to leave right away, and it was a good thing because I was just getting very emotional. I was so thankful to the Father for moving upon anyone to bless us. And, man, I got in my truck, and I opened the, opened the check and looked at it. If I wasn't sitting down, I would have fallen over. I couldn't believe it. And so all praise to the king who owns every penny of everything on the earth. It's all his. And praise the Lord, there are people who live like that for real. Say, you know what? This isn't mine. This bank account, this business, these possessions, man, they're not mine. (laughs) It's all the Lord's. And really live accordingly, man. What a blessing. What an awesome blessing. So praise the Father. Not I'm not praising men. Praise the Father. He puts that on any other any other person's heart. I hope we all live like that. Open handed. So amen. Praise the Lord for the work he's doing. May God do what he wants to do in this podcast, in my life, in my household. In your household, in your fellowship, man, it's time for the work of the Lord to advance right here, right now. Thanks for listening. Have a good day. Amen.